when you study the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the month of Ramadan is a month of forgiveness. That means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to forgive, no doubt. But the person, the human being, has to be the very first person to take that step. He has to or she has to take that first step to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to show true remorse and regret over their sins, to confess to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of their wrongdoings. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does forgive. I want us to, I, I'm sure you've heard this hadith before, I've mentioned this hadith before, but once again, it is a lesson for all of us that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was a prophet who loved his ummah, a prophet that he will always put his community before he would always put himself forward. He, this is a person, a prophet, who always made sacrifices for his own community. When the time came to make hijrah, the very first hijrah to Abyssinia, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose to stay behind in Mecca and go and experience the religious persecution, but he looked after his own community. This is a prophet that on the day of judgment, he will be the only prophet who will not be worried about himself, he will not be worried about his family, but he will be worried about the ummah. This is the only prophet that he said to Aisha radiallahu anha, that I make dua for my people, not once, but multiple times every single day, not a week and month, but every single day. A prophet who was filled with mercy, and the Prophet ﷺ, he exhibited that mercy on so many different occasions. This same prophet who loved us, he is the same prophet who also is saying, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. This is the same prophet that when he heard Jibreel alayhi salam saying that may that person be destroyed, may that per may Allah subhanahu wa may that person be ruined who found Ramadan, who found Ramadan and did not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, who did not get their sins forgiven. That prophet who is filled with mercy. Who never made, who never took revenge from others, who said at the time of Fath Makkah, La Tathriba Alaikum al Yom, Yafirullah Hulakum Wahu Arham Rahimin. The same Prophet he's saying Ameen to the dua of Jibreel alayhi salam, which goes to teach us that the frustration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that how can you be a human being? What kind of a human being are you? That you found Ramadan and you did not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. That is why whatever we do in these last 10 nights of Ramadan, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And this is why when we talk about sins in general, we have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make certain things testify against us on the day of judgment. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghafoor and He forgives, that still does not mean that that sin will be omitted from our records. Imagine you made a late payment on a credit card. Years later, you're trying to go and buy a house and they pull your credit report. That one late payment that you made will be on your credit report. And you're thinking to yourself that, wow, I made only one, la one late payment. I made only one late payment and this credit report is highlighting that late payment. Because this is how the records are kept. Likewise, when you and I, when we commit sins, there is a record of it in our, in our deeds, in our book of deeds. And on the day of judgment, even if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives it and He lets it go, it's still there in our book of deeds. The record still does exist. And we find in the various hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in the Quranic ayat that there will be certain things on the day of judgment that will testify against us. The Quran, Al Quran, Hujjatun Laka Aw Alaik. The Quran will either testify for us or against us, as we find in the hadith of the Prophet. We also find in Surah Zalzala. That the day will come that this earth will give its information. It will provide its information. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's sitting with the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and he read this ayah, and he says that, do you know what information that is? That this Quran, this ayah of the Quran is talking about. And they said, Allahu wa rasuluhu a'lam. That Allah and His Prophet ﷺ, they know best. At that time, Rasulullah ﷺ said that on that earth, that piece of earth where we committed a sin, 
that piece of land will testify against the person on the day of judgment. Wherever we have been and we did something wrong, we transgressed against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that land will testify against us on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yaseen, الْيَوْمَ نَخْتِمُ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَتُكَلِّمُنَا أَيْدِيهِمْ وَتَشْهَدُ أَرْجِلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ In Surah Fussilat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, حَتَّى إِذَا مَا جَاءُوهَا شَهِدَ عَلَيْهِمْ سَمْعُهُمْ وَأَبْصَارُهُمْ وَجُلُودُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَنُونَ وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا I thought, we on the most, I thought you and I were on the same side. Why are you, this is the human being telling his ears, why are you testifying against me on the day of judgment? He's going to be telling his eyes, why are you testifying against me on the day of judgment? He's going to tell his hands, why are you testifying against me on the day of judgment? They will say, لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا قَالُوا أَنْتَقَنَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي أَنْتَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ That that Lord who gave you the ability to speak, he gave us the ability to speak and communicate. And hence, we are commun communicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what wrong you have done. But now think about this. Even if the sins are there in the book of deeds, it's apparent there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may or may not forgive him. May Allah forgive us on the day of judgment. But these things can testify against us. However, when we talk about Ramadan, and we talk about forgiveness of Ramadan. And we're talking about that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His mercy is in full swing. We're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, it is at its peak. Then think about the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan. And that is why this dua that you and I, we recite, Allahumma inna ka'afuun. Tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni or fa'fu anna. This is a very powerful dua because this dua is not only about Ya Allah forgive me, but it's about that Ya Allah you forgive me in a way. Fa'fu anni, forgive me for that time I committed haram. Forgive me for that time when I did something that is wrong and no one was around me. Forgive me for that sin that I have committed that I would not like anyone to know about. Forgive me for that sin that I don't want my parents to know about. Forgive me for that sin that I don't want my wife or my children or my husband to know about. Forgive me for that sin that when I was with that girl or that boy and non-mahram and so forth and no one knew about it. Ya Allah, you forgive me for that. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way and this word afu means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only He forgives it, but it does not even exist in your book of deeds. The record has been, has been wiped clean. That means that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives us and He exercises afu upon us, that means that this hand, this ear, these eyes, everything, our, our, our limbs, they will not be able to testify against us because there is no record of it. The land where we committed that sin, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He exercises afu upon us, that land will not testify against us. Why? Because the land has no idea that this thing, this sin does even exist. That sin, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes it completely from our records and it does not exist, there's only two who know. It is Allah within His own infinite wisdom and His knowledge, His infinite knowledge. He knows about it and we know about it and no one else knows about it. This is why this word, this dua, Allahumma inna ka'afuun, does not only mean that Allah is forgiving it, it means that it does not even exist in your book of deeds. It does not even exist in your record. Think about appearing before Allah the day of judgment. And you and I, we will remember of all the things that you and I, we have done. But imagine going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the Quran says, وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابِ فَتَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِي When the mujrim, the wrongdoer, he is scared. You know when a child knows they have done something that is wrong and they go to their parents and they're wondering what kind of punishment will my parents put upon me? What will they say about me? When you go to your boss and you know you have done something that is wrong, and you know he's gonna give you a tongue lashing, he's gonna bring out everything wrong that you have done, you're worried about it. The Quran says, these people, mushfiqeen, they are worried about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gonna say. مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا إِحْصَاهَا This is a kitab that does not leave out any small, minute or bigger details. This same book, Imagine that sin that you and I, we have committed, it does not even exist.
This is the kind of forgiveness that you and I, we are looking for. So remember, this dua is a very powerful dua. Recite this dua every single day in these last two nights of Ramadan. Allahumma inna ka'afuun. Tuhibbul afwa fa'afu ani. When you recite this dua, you know, I know, we all know the sins that you and I, we have committed. And remember those sins. That, Ya Allah, I did such and such wrong things. Ya Allah, forgive me for that. Ya Allah, do not expose my sins on the day of judgment. Ya Allah, do not bring them in front of everyone. Do not make them apparent to everyone on the day of judgment. Ya Allah, do not even bring it up. And not only that, but wipe it out completely from my book of deeds, from my records, completely that even no one knows about it. Only you know about it. I know about it. Allahumma inna ka'afuun. Tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us in these days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala convert our sayyat into hasanat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the best in this dunya and the akhirah. Ameen rabbil alameen. Wa jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْقَانِتِينَ وَالْقَانِتَاتِ وَالصَّادِقِينَ وَالصَّادِقَاتِ وَالصَّابِرِينَ وَالصَّابِرَاتِ وَالْخَاشِعِينَ وَالْخَاشِعَاتِ والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما